Hey guys, today we have a very exciting panel with Lawrence from Rent DeFi and Long from TomoChain. Please like and subscribe our channel to stay tuned and let's jump right in. Hello everyone and welcome to today's discussion. My name is Mel and I'll be moderating today's talk. And today we have Lawrence, and Eric, and Long um, joining us uh, from TomoChain and Injective Protocol. So let's get started. Thanks guys for being here. Super awesome that we were able to do this. Um, so TomoChain, Ramp DeFi, and Injective Protocol are all making immense moves in the DeFi markets. Let's start today's conversation by getting to know a little bit more of your projects um, and uh, just introduce a little bit of what you guys are up to. We can start with uh, Long and then we'll move on to Lawrence and Eric. Hi, hi, Mel, Lawrence, and uh, Eric. Uh, my name is Long Vương. Uh, I am a CEO of uh, TomoChain Lab, and uh, we are building and maintaining the, the fast and low fee public chain protocol TomoChain. Uh, TomoChain launched the uh, mainnet in uh, December 2018, and uh, we have been working on uh, improving the Tomo ecosystem since then with uh, mobile application, DeFi application. Uh, for me personally, I have been in the space since uh, 2014. And uh, we, we went to two bear markets right, in uh, 2015, 2016, and then uh, 2018, 2019. And I, I think uh, what we have uh, achieved here is uh, really amazing. And uh, I'm very glad to be here. Awesome, thank you, Long. Um... And Lawrence, could you tell us a little bit? Sure. Yeah, very happy to be here. Um, good to see you, Long. Good to see you, Eric. Um, since announcing the partnership with uh, Tomo Chain and Injective, you know, I think our community has been very excited. Just to share a little bit about Ram DeFi, what we do is that we help users to collateralize their digital staked assets while the assets are held in staking and earning passive rewards into a stable coin that they can use to deploy into other protocols or to you know, deploy um, you know, or to swap for USDT or USDC. So this makes um, you know, staked assets, which are previously very illiquid, um, you know, very flexible in terms of their use. You know, users do not have to give up their positions to extract liquidity, you know, extract capital from these assets. Instead, they can allow these assets to stay in a U generating form and um, be, extra, be able to extract a form of capital from that from these assets and you know be able to redeploy it into additional yield. So that's what we are help, looking to help users achieve to extract greater capital efficiency from their staked assets. Um, so uh, just for myself, um, my background, I spent the last three years in blockchain uh, with a layer one company called IOST. Um, I was their head of international growth um, for two, roughly two years before I started working on DeFi you know, project, which led to what REM is today. Um, prior to that, I know I was in banking and finance. I think this um, new paradigm of DeFi and blockchain is really exciting. Um, we had a great experience developing on Tomo Chain as well, and you know, uh, working with Injective. So very excited about this, um, you know, this this discussion today. Awesome, thanks. Yeah, we're all really excited. So Eric, tell us a little bit more about Injective. Yeah, hey guys, uh, I'm Eric from Injective. So Injective, on a highest level, is a fully decentralized derivatives exchange that supports cross-chain derivatives trading uh, and as a transfer. So we have a basic EVM layer and also scale a lot of transactions that usually happens on Ethereum on top of our native chain. And obviously we are being a Cosmos based uh, um, protocol. We also support IBC transfer across other Cosmos zone projects. So generally very excited to talk to Temple Chain and Rem DeFi uh, on cross-chain derivatives and just in general staking derivatives. Yeah, super exciting. Well, Injective recently partnered with Tama Chain and Ramp to launch cross-chain uh, staking derivatives. And in the coming months, users will be able to trade staking derivatives with leverage across multiple layer one protocols. Could you tell us a little bit more about this three-way partnership and collaboration? What can we expect from the partnership? Um, we'll start with Eric on this and then move on to Long and Lawrence. Yeah, I think what's really interesting here is that we're, we're essentially having this uh, money level that's uh, kind of similar with the composability feature of Ethereum, but in a cross-chain sense. 
So essentially, you know, uh, Ethereum obviously all being sitting on one chain has the share mutable ledger issue. Uh, and obviously, as you can see now, the gas cost is astronomically high. Um, but obviously, this issue is heavily mitigated uh, by, you know, having this type of cross-chain um, infrastructure while retaining the same type of uh, uh, composability and, uh, you know, asset transfer uh, once the flexibility and once the bridge infrastructure improves. So, yeah, so, so that's what I'm uh, really excited about is because, you know, we have the derivative infrastructure. We can make the uh, positions transferable, composable. Um, and obviously, Tomo Chain has a pretty robust uh, DEX infrastructure, and they have a very long history of uh, you know uh, uh, retaining a uh, very strong user base, and obviously Rem DeFi is an expert in you know uh, liquefying or like uh, uh, creating staking derivatives. Um, so 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 I think you know like uh, as we grow more and more, as uh, you know all three of us build our ecosystems, um, basically the synergy between us uh, as we create these kind of like a cross chain or like a cross ecosystem. Um, uh, um, products is going to be extremely exciting yeah for sure super exciting i think the whole community can't wait um lawrence could you tell us a little bit of your thoughts on this sure so i think uh you know when we started looking at this um, cross-chain staking derivatives i think it created a you know we were just looking from a user's perspective uh what's the sort of scenario they face and um i think you know as eric rightly pointed out tomo chain has a really strong user base you know um there's a lot of um users are very active they participate a lot within the ecosystem around say you know governance staking um high staking rates essentially and stuff so what we want to do is really, um, you know, target, you know, blockchains, you know, with this sort of uh, strong users and, you know, allowing these users to have more options on the assets that they currently hold. I mean, definitely if they hold Tomo, they have a long view on Tomo. And, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, we want to help them maximize this, um, you know, this opportunity, you know, still being able to very behaviorally involved within the Tomo ecosystem, yet at the same time, you know, um, be able to, um, extracts, uh, you know, liquidity from their assets to participate, you know, in say, I uh, say, I would say financial opportunities. So, you know, I think this ties things up with injective. I think, uh, you know, within the crypto space, um, trading is definitely something that, you know, users do quite a bit. So, you know, I, I think this whole thing is just a very natural, um, part of, you know, just, um, creating something that users want, you know, um, Tomo chain, you know, having you know a strong users with a with a good you know um, I would say a good participation in the ecosystem. You know, we helping to wrap the assets and then users being able to take this to injective to trade and you know um, and and really explore opportunities while still being involved again in Tomo. Yeah, for sure. No, um, that's super exciting. And uh, Long, could you tell us a little bit of your thoughts on okay. um, the partnership? Uh, sure. I think, you know, firstly, I want, I, I want to thank the RAM DeFi, the protocol and Lawrence for, uh, for the integration. I think I, I'm just happy that the integration is uh, possible and done by the RAM team. And then it expanded uh, further by uh, injective protocol for derivative chainings. I think uh, it, it helps uh, to more uh, an access uh, to, to be able to do that. And uh, by listening to more, I hope that our user, uh, Tomo user can also help and promote uh, RAM DeFi and uh, injective protocol. I think uh, it's important uh, for us, right, to create a different kind of uh, experiment for the user. And um, they try it and uh, they can earn a little bit of money from that. And uh, they stick around with the crypto. I think that's, that's the best uh, way to go. Yeah, for sure. I know we just talked a little bit about um, the effects on the ecosystem, the staking ecosystem uh, in regards to the partnership. But I'd like to talk a little bit more about um, what the role of Tomo Chain and Ramp DeFi and Injective is in the staking ecosystem. And also uh, what briefly, you know, what this partnership means for the respective communities. So um, we can start with long use and see you just Sure, yeah. Um, I think in, in my view, uh, staking reward is uh, somewhat like, you know, the protocol uh, deterministic, de deterministic uh, monetary policy, right? So every country have monetary policy. Uh, the Fed, Federal Reserve have their own way of printing money. But the protocol generally have a fixed uh, monetary policy like Bitcoin. Uh, I think Tomo Chain have the same deterministic uh, uh, schedule of uh, injecting more Tomo as 
as uh, second review. I think it's uh, really help. Uh, um, that's really help to grow the the community and the ecosystem. And I think the the, the native assets like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ether, and Tomo. Uh, need to expand more because it's uh, very useful to be uh, collateral, right? Uh, to be used in DeFi for farming, air collateral to grow more in the future, so we can attract more users uh, to to the space. I think that's that's uh, staking reward is is uh, important in that way. Thank you, Wang, Lawrence, Eric. Any other additional comments? Feel free, <laughs> Lawrence. Um, I, I, I... Okay, go ahead, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, no, I just um, you know, uh, chip in um, you know, quickly on where we think we see. It. I think the key is that um, in the staking ecosystem, we saw that you know, if assets are just held in staking, it's pretty much illiquid. So if we are, you know, it's pretty much removed from the ecosystem, and that's you know, I would say very precious capital and asset values that is taken out from the entire entire industry. So I think uh, that's really where we see we are doing our most valuable work to allow users, um, you know, uh, venture funds or investment funds or even blockchain foundations to be able to extract a certain value from their holdings and allowing this to, you know, create a new sort of source of liquidity and adding to the overall value of the ecosystem. So uh, that's where everything, I think, you know, REM is is adding, doing the, our best work. Yeah, and, and I certainly agree on that front as well. And especially uh, when it comes to general, you know, uh, Cosmos, uh, um, uh, uh, kind of like staking um, calculation. Uh, it targets around the, you know like 66 percent uh, fully stake. That is kind of like a benchmark or like target uh, staking ratio, which is kind of locking up you know a super majority of the token uh, w within staking that makes it uh, essentially liquid. And obviously you know th this is kind of like a hinder opportunity for a lot of uh, um, projects and uh, you know ecosystem participants to be able to liquefy those and be able to uh, essentially uh, create more structured products around it, just like how we're doing it, uh, you know, within the traditional financial market with regards to T-bonds and everything. Yeah, for sure. Lawrence, this question is for you. So Ramp DeFi has a promising case in providing novel liquidity. Um, now users can earn staking rewards with simultaneously being able to unlock liquidity. Um, via the minting of collateralized tokens. Can you walk us through this process? How does it work? Sure. So I think just really on the high level so that is, you know, um, doesn't get too technical, um, the simple way to look at it is that we develop smart contracts on the various blockchains. So as REM is really a, a multi-chain um, application, you know, designed to connect liquidity across different networks. So we'll have smart contracts that's able to allow the staking and depositing of assets within the smart contract. And then, you know, we'll help users redeploy these assets into staking. So pretty much, you know, they will be participating into staking um, via our smart contract. So because the smart contracts um, contain the balance of assets, we are able to allow users to further mint the RUSD stablecoin against this balance. And then once a stable coin is being minted, then you know it can be brought anywhere, whether it's you know Ethereum, it can be again natively within the same network into a DApp that accepts this RUSD. You know, uh, it can be you know done anywhere as long as there's a breach. So um, I think that's um, how we are developing the RUSD solution. Of course, um, because the assets are into our smart contracts as well, we are pretty flexible. We are also able to allow the red version of the asset to be created, you know, under the kind of like same um, umbrella. And then this rep asset can say be brought over to injective um, to be traded. So, you know, I think um, what we are just really looking is to create what we call a liquidity network that can be brought across chains. Super exciting. Yeah. Um, thank you, Lawrence. Long, this question is for you. So Tama Chain is based on proof of stake. When Tama holders collateralize their staked assets into a ramp smart contracts on Tama Chain, it will create the Chenwin. What's the benefits of this process and what's a Tomo used for? How does this benefit the Tomo chain ecosystem? Uh, sure. Uh, firstly, uh, RAP Tomo is on Ethereum and can be used for uh, in farming or in uh, derivative protocol like Injective. 
uh, it creates utilities. Uh, I think secondly, is uh, wrap to more can be used as collateral to borrow uh, synthetic dollar. It also like uh, benefit the end user a lot. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, Alon. Um, so Eric, with the launch of cross-chain staking derivatives trading opens up new yield farming opportunities. What are your thoughts on this and what avenues do you want to explore in the future? Yeah, so essentially like what we're trying to build up here is uh, an infrastructure for uh, to enable all the possibilities of bundling different types of structured products um, and creating you know specialized products that has a different type of uh, risk parameter. Um, so basically, uh, on a fundamental level, we're going to be opening up multiple, you know, like um, almost like a yield farming derivatives or like, you know, like a staking derivative where essentially it takes, uh, it tracks a yield of a, um, or return of a stake based on like an index. So let's say if you put $1 um, into, you know, a certain staking derivative or, or, you know, like a certain like a yield farming um, instrument. Um, then it tracks, you know, how that one dollar performs over time. Um, so basically, one of the most interesting things that we're going to start seeing, um, if you know these these type of products proliferate and start building up liquidity around it, which I'm sure it will, um, is that we uh, we're going to notice that a lot of these uh, a lot of these uh, uh, products can be you know, diversified. Um, it can have a, you know different like a specific parameter around it. Um, and, you know, across, you know, multiple chains, um, the, the opportunity will be also maximized. So um, basically, we're kind of introducing like a much cheaper and much more uh, efficient version of these uh, type of uh, staking derivatives um, um, or like a kind of like a yield product uh, uh, to, to the greater uh, ecosystem, kind of like beyond just Ethereum. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, I think it's super exciting to see um, this come about. So there has been a rise in multiple layer of one chains in the industry, but each one has its own ecosystem and works separately. It's really great to see you guys make the first step. You know, the cross chain staking derivatives definitely solves the liquidity problem and brings more revenue for users. It really marks the creation of entirely new market that was thought to be I don't think it was thought to be imaginable before, really. So what opportunities can we expect as different layer one ecosystems continue to grow? Um, we'll start with uh, Lawrence on this one and then move on to Long and then Eric. Sure thing. So I think, um, you know, I think we are seeing Ethereum uh, obviously being the most developed ecosystem, but yet yeah, at the same time is very limited by the high gas fees that's going on. I think. Uh, you know, transactions on Ethereum is so expensive these days that everyone is actually looking outward towards the other layer one ecosystems. And I really think this is an opportunity for other layer ones ecosystem like Tomo Chain, you know, to really um, capture a good part of the DeFi market. So I think in particular, um, you know, just uh, we have, again, you know, collaborated very closely with Tomo Chain, also all the things like Tomo Bridge, you know, Tomo Dex, et cetera. Um, actually, um, you know, are quite capable of supporting a, um, I would say, um, scale of scaling and supporting, you know, high speed, you know, high frequency trading and stuff. So um, I, I think, you know, just again, broadly, I, I do see um, a good part of the, um, I would say volumes and action being moved into the other layer ones. You know, I, I think, you know, besides Tomo Chain, of course, Binance Smart Chain, as I said, 4B has also launched its own chain. I think everybody is seeing this opportunity to really grab a piece of the pie away from Ethereum. So I, I think that's the great part, right? Because, you know, um, it helps all the different layer ones really mature um, swiftly. Um, and I think that can only be good for the DeFi ecosystem. I think it would be a shame for DeFi to be kept by Ethereum um, network speeds. So um, I think, uh, I think um, you know, I, I actually can sort of see the current sort of like uh, um, the DeFi that was taking off since quarter three last year to be very similar to what's happening in all the earlier ones right now. You know, new stops are launching. Um, you know, new sort of algorithmic stable coins are getting launched. Um, you know, the, the whole pattern is coming back again, but you know, in a much bigger um, manner and you know, as together as an industry. So I actually, um, you know, I expect, uh, I would say just in general, um, you know, a lot of, I would say value creation, you know, from all of these different activities that's happening in terms of asset, liquid assets, you know, a, a lot of solutions were launched. Um, 
you know, I, I think, you know, coming maturing, you know, within this space. So I think in the next few months, we'll see a lot of uh, exciting things happening. Definitely some maturity in the space. Um, so Long, do you have any additional comments you'd like to share? Yeah, sure. I certainly prefer the, the diversity of multiple public chains and uh, multi-chain DeFi. And I, I think that's the future uh, uh, is going to be. I think so when uh, the transaction fee on Ethereum is uh, very high right, right now, there is uh, a room for a, a cheaper fee and, and faster public chain like Tombow chain. So I think it's good that uh, we, we kept like, you know, uh, doing different experiments and um, as long as we continue to educate end user and attract them to the ecosystem, I think it's, it's, uh, it's a good way to go. Yeah, definitely. Education is a vital piece I think we've been seeing in the ecosystem so far. Um, Eric, uh, would love to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah, um, I think just in general for uh, Ethereum, they even went through the same phase of the narrative as, you know, like they're just being treated as kind of like a Bitcoin sidechain, especially when all those right Bitcoin products are coming around and they started gaining pop popularity. So um, I, I, I think it's going to be somewhat similar um, uh, in terms of what's going to happen to Ethereum. Um, uh, essentially, a lot of these, you know, layer one that's going to uh, continuously grow and, you know, uh, uh, really find their special purpose within the ecosystem or, you know, like find their special community. Um, they're going to be uh, essentially uh, gain their initial kind of like a critical value uh, locked or like kind of like a critical mass through like almost being perceived as like an Ethereum sidechain. Um, but then, you know, slowly find their footing, slowly gain their ground. Um, and I think, you know, that's, that's what's really exciting because all these layer ones are almost you know, uh, unify behind, you know, a, a multitude of purpose uh, or, you know, like a specific set of goals that uh, Ethereum can't really, you know, uh, um, uh, fully satisfy, right? So, um, yeah, especially as, you know, gas becomes more and more expensive, especially as a lot of the more, um, <clears throat> like, quote unquote, low frequency and, um, you know, uh, um, kind of like, fine, almost serving as like a final settlement layer for a lot of these, uh, you know, like uh, uh, assets, because after all, at the end of the day, you know, most of the assets, uh, especially token, uh, are just sitting on Ethereum. So what we can, uh, what we might be able to see, you know, like a year or two from now, is that Ethereum is once again uh, acting almost like a clearinghouse for a lot of these, you know, higher frequency, uh, you know, higher transfer rate or higher flexibility uh, um, uh, uh, layer ones, um, and you know, having a lot of these, you know, tokens uh, uh, cementing uh, on Ethereum. Yeah, I think for sure we'll get to see what happens with Ethereum in uh, not only the coming months. Um, I think the last few months we, we've seen some interesting uh, things happen. Um, so guys, the teams that ramp DeFi, Tomo Chain, Injective share the common goal to further democratize opportunities within the financial sector. What opportunities do you guys see coming up within the DeFi sector that can help reach this common goal? Eric, since we left off with you, we'll start with you and then we'll move on to Long and Lawrence. Yeah, um, I think right now, really, um, what we're seeing is the uh, money levels slowly building you know, higher and higher. Um, we've put a huge emphasis on lending and uh, basically automated market maker, basically the exchange. Uh, base layer exchange infrastructure uh, on Ethereum, and we've done a lot of innovation specifically on how they interact with each other and how they uh, um, how they kind of like find their value standing. Um, but what we're eventually uh, going to see is that uh, the money level is just going to get more and more complex, and especially as uh, derivatives start uh, start to come into the picture, um, especially you know. Uh, more and more interesting derivative products uh, start to be, uh, be become uh, more widely adopted, and ideally, actually, by institutions and you know traditional retails like non-crypto retails. Um, what we're going to see is that um, there's going to be an extremely intricate interplay between all these layers, um, you know, from a base layer uh, lending, um, staking, um, AMM infrastructure, you know, all the way up to uh, uh, like a trader, uh, uh, you know, trader facing or like some uh, some sort of order book based or some sort of you know um, uh, and, uh, structure product uh, that's extremely consumer uh, friendly, that's extremely retail friendly. 
Um, yeah, so so I think what we can really look forward to is you know exploring um, higher and higher within this uh, Lego tower and see what product comes up on top. Yeah, and I think the community is eager to see that product. Um, Long, we'll move on with to you. Any comments you'd like to share on this topic? I, I think you know, what is uh, really surprising about uh, our industry, crypto industry, is uh, is the ability to invent new things, new concepts. Right? We have ICO. You know, the great thing, great high in 2017 ICO, and then we have IEO, we have IDEO, uh, right? And I think farming is also like a great new concept. It has been working very well to educate uh, new users. So I think I definitely think so we will invent more things like derivative trading, uh, you know, on chain and staking. There are some new things which we will see how you know how how much traction uh, the new thing is going uh, are going to get. Uh, for me personally, I think so. I I could use. Uh, crypto dollar and crypto asset uh, to pay more things, uh, particularly in the digital uh, space. I like paying for uh, digital subscription and other things. But I, I think the, the demand is there for the kind of payment, but uh, we also need to solve the scalability and cheaper fee issue, right? I think you, you can spend like uh, $100 for a swap, right, for trading. But only when you make a lot of money from that, uh, you, you can pay, you know, you can pay 100 in transaction fee for to subscribe to newspaper. So we definitely need to, to show the scalability and cheaper fee problem, you know, the sooner, sooner rather than later. Sooner rather than later, for sure. <laughs> Lawrence, um, would love to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, actually, I think, you know, DeFi has grown really fast, but at the same time, it's still really young. So, you know, I, th I think, you know, the launch of things like uh, automated market makers, you know, all this at the foundation. But, you know, I think going forward after, um, you know, the all this like our base, base sort of um, infrastructure is, is ready, um, I would... I would say I, I think there's two portions of DeFi that I think would be the most, um, I would say, um, would shine in 2021. Um, I think the first part is really, um, you know, structured derivatives. Um, so I think, you know, people would start to look for more sophisticated um, products, outcomes, besides, you know, um, what's available right now. And I think, you know, this can go in the direction of, say, you know, customized risk reward profiles or leverage trading, where, you know, um, either users are able to tranche and participate in risk reward, um, you know, uh, customized risk reward sort of like your products of their choosing, or say, you know, leverage trading within the, um, decentralized space, which, you know, um, is something that Injective solve and, you know, is, is leading for. So I, I think all this, you know, create that extra kind of, um, you know, I, I think a lot of DeFi right now is about leverage and greater capital efficiency. Um, so, you know, I think this, this is the first portion. And then the second portion, I really think is about cross-chain. So, um, you know, there's, I think, I think, you know, there's so many different assets, so many, so much market value, market cap that's being spread around different networks. So, you know, once, once that solution that allows all these asset values, all this really, in a sense, capital to be moving and interacting with each other, then I think that's when, you know, things can multiply and compound upon themselves. So, um, you know, I think are just also touching back on ramp. That's why one of the key things that we are looking to do is really um, focus on breaking down these barriers and you know, really being blockchain agnostic so that you know, liquidity can really become a bit more, in a sense, global um, as we see it, so that you know, um, that sort of our capital can, can really be, um, yeah, be, be leveraged you know, in, the, in their multi-chain, multi-network multi context. So I, I think, yeah, um, at least uh, from, from where we see, you know, I think uh, this will be some interesting teams to look out for in, in this year. Definitely. And I think we're all looking forward to, to, to those things um, and for everyone to reach that goal of uh, further democrat, democrat, sorry, further um, decentralizing the financial sector. 
So great, I'd love to open up the floor for all of you to chat about anything else that you think might be important for the community to know. Um, feel free to share any upcoming um, things that you guys have going on. I know Injective has some um, uh, upcoming events coming up. So yep, uh, Eric would love to hear. Yeah, um, so currently, obviously we're launching our social uh, Equinox uh, uh, staking. So um, that's something very exciting for both, you know, uh, validator, uh, validators that we're currently onboarding and also, you know, the general um, retail community that we're working with. Um, uh, essentially, uh, be, uh, unlike, you know, most of these like uh, incentivized test nets, uh, we've been running it uh, to, to ensure that every single member of the community has a chance to engage with the overall protocol. And I think the most interesting aspects of that is that um, essentially me as a token holder with uh, you know, probably like a, a not that significant of a stake, I can still participate in, you know, uh, all the governance vote, uh, help test out a lot of things and launch a market and maybe even have my market accepted uh, by the futures protocol. So, um, so, so I think that's generally what's uh, really exciting for us. And um, basically, this is uh, one of very few testnets out there that really gets, uh, that, that really engages with uh, every single community member um, that, you know, doesn't just uh, uh, tr try to uh, be like a kind of validator centric testnet, but rather, you know, be like an entire uh, community centric uh, testnet. And one of the problems that we ran into during our Equinox space is that, uh, during our Solstice space is that, um, uh, the trading competition is mainly just serving traders and they don't really know you know how our internal uh you know uh, infrastructure works how you know every single component of injective works and uh, for equinox this is really what we uh, what we're striving for which is exposing every single aspect of it uh, from the market creation from you know how the magic of uh let's say uh launching is uh stock market futures within you know just uh, 10, 20 minutes uh, uh, actually happens in the back end. Um, and yeah, like really present that to the community and have them to uh, uh, have the chance to do the exact same thing. Definitely. And that's that piece of education that we mentioned earlier that was really important. It's really exciting to see how you guys are incorporating all the whole community into this. Uh, Lauren Slong, if you guys have any other aspects uh, or topics you'd like to share and touch upon floor is all yours hello you want to go first or uh, i can uh, happy to share uh yeah <laughs> <You're free> Lawrence, yeah <laughs> okay sure <laughs> okay. Ahead, yeah. yeah okay uh so um i think uh actually um it's pretty cool to hear that injective is launching its validators program um you know we actually run quite a lot of validation as well that's um the foundation we have set for MD5. So in fact, there are so far in the nodes that we are running, there's roughly 170 million worth of, uh, of you know, assets being staked with our nodes you know, across multiple networks. So um, you know, maybe after this, uh, I'll get in touch with Eric to look at <laughs> injective staking and participating as a validator. Um, yeah, so I think above and beyond that, you know, uh, something cool to share would be that uh, we are launching our full suite solution soon. Um, by yeah, I think you know in a couple of weeks time. So audit is already ongoing. So far, it's going pretty good. Um, you know, our collateral, our staking collateralizations um, solution, liquidity unlocking will take place. Um, you know, will we'll start be functioning in in one to two weeks time. So I think uh, that's a pretty exciting update. You know, um, this would also mean that you know, say users from Tomo Chain can uh, collateralize the assets into liquidity and you know participate in say DeFi um, across multi protocol, you know, native from Tomo as well as you know across other protocols should they wish to. So I think you know, um, and of course you know um, users from say Ethereum etc can also bring their assets over into Tomo. So I think that makes it a lot more fluid. You know, I, I think. Uh, um, uh, you know, I'm sure Tomo will be one of the rep assets that we are doing. And, you know, um, I would think, you know, if there's more other um, liquid assets on Tomo, we can always add on and also work together with Injective to bring more, you know, rep assets from different blockchains over for trading. So now I think this is really just the beginning. And, uh, you know, I, I look forward to actually working very closely with Long and Eric to, you know, create more opportunities in DeFi. I am excited to hear updates from uh, Lawrence and Eric. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I I'm super happy to see uh, both uh, Ram DeFi and Executive Protocol doing well. 
uh, uh, growing the commodities and uh, producing new products. I think so. We working on uh, different piece of software, and so one thing uh, we going to upgrade soon is uh, to move risk. Uh, the purpose is uh, to bring more asset from Ethereum uh, to Tomo Chain. Uh, we uh, already did that with uh, a number of uh, assets, but um, um, the upgrade kept like uh, increase the security of the breed, and uh, hopefully we can grow the assets, the, the value of the asset uh, growth chains uh, with that. We also uh, have a product called Lua Swap, which is uh, an AMM exchange. Uh, quite similar to Uniswap, but uh, we actually have both uh, two versions, one running on Ethereum and one uh, uh, running on TomoChain. And the TomoChain is uh, obviously much cheaper and uh, people are very happy to use us. Uh, we launched the product on Ethereum first uh, to get some traction, and then so we launched on uh, TomoChain. So uh, yeah, these are some of the things uh, we, we are doing. and. Um, uh, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to uh, um, further collaboration with both uh, initiatives and uh, RAM DeFi in the future. I think this has been a great talk. Thank you so much, guys, for being here. Um, and I'm sure that uh, the community is super excited to see all of these upcoming events um, and milestones that uh, together you'll hit and uh, that individually you're all working towards. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, uh, one final thought. I, I just hope we can travel again soon. <laughs> uh, I think Lauren is uh, in Singapore, right? Yeah. Yes, correct. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it will be great. You know, uh, you know, video is great, but I know we definitely love to meet up with Eric, Long, and Mel, uh, mm -hmm. you know, one of his days. Um, you know, I'm sure by then, uh, DeFi and crypto, we have gotten a long way. <laughs> we can help things out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hopefully, hopefully it's sooner rather than later, right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, thanks again and uh, take care and stay healthy. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Thanks so much for tuning in to our panel today. We have a lot more exciting content coming out soon with our partners and investors. Please like and subscribe to our channel and stay tuned. Thank you.